many of you would describe your day as pumped and excited because it's Sunday? There we go. See, that was, that was the reaction I was hoping to get um, because it's, a, it's an exciting day to be alive. It's an exciting day to be at church um, for a number of reasons, but one of them being um, the topic that we're going to be getting into. So um, before we get into our topic of the day, um, I, I want to ask everybody a, a question. I want you to think about something, okay? What do you think about when you think of your first day of school? I want you to turn to the person next to you. What do you think of when you think about the first day of school? Go. This could be like your first day of school that you remember ever, or maybe a first day at a new building, or a first day at a new school. But your first day of school, what memories come into your mind? All right, and then once, once you've kind of thought through that through, I want you to, to shout out to me um, as loud as you can, and I'll write it down as I hear them, what feelings you felt on your first day of school. Do You don't think about, that's not what you experience as a feeling. What's a feeling you experience? Embarrassed? Okay. Oh, this leg is coming off here. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing... Embarrassed. I heard anxious. Bored. Excited. Nervous. The same as last year. What else do you feel? That's not a feeling. Horrible? Is that what you just said? You don't like school, do you? All right, I'll, I'll write horrible. I think that's, yeah, I totally spelled that wrong. Just two R's, right? Yeah, horrible. Okay. Anything else I'm missing? Tired? Is that what you said? Okay. We'll go, here, I'll think a line. We'll say tired. Tortured. Yes. What else? Anything else that you feel? Prison. Sad? Did you just say sad? Depressed that school's starting back up. How many of you guys, you start school next week? Okay, okay. If you could relate to any of these words in regards to your feeling about next week, or for some of you in two weeks. Which one do you resonate with? Torture! All of those. Okay. Excited and bored. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, so I'm getting the sense, tell me if I'm wrong here, I'm getting the sense that we have some mixed feelings towards school. How many of you, these words, would apply to every single day of school. How many of you, this would just apply to that first day? Like, you're probably not like as nervous like by day 400 of school, right? But day one, day two, day three, maybe, maybe a little more nervous. Yeah, but I was stretching it over years, so just, just go with it. Don't, don't think about it too hard. All right, all right, so... These are a representation of all the different things that you guys feel on the first day of school. And I think uh, maybe you feel this way, like you're nervous about like, getting to class on time. Uh, maybe it's a new building and you don't know if the four or five minutes between classes is going to be enough to get to your locker. Remember your combination. Get your stuff. Head to your next class. Or, or maybe, maybe you're excited because you just love like, getting back into routine. And summers were exciting like the first two weeks and then... And then you got really bored, and then you were ready for, like, school again. I see some nodding heads. Some of you, maybe you just, you know, you're anxious about a lot of different things. Maybe, maybe it's about, like, your class schedule getting a little bit harder, and you're, you're anxious that, like, that maybe that doesn't go away after the first day. Maybe you start to feel anxious for the first couple of weeks of school because you're wondering if you'll be able to keep up with the schoolwork. You, you go into school every year and you feel a mixture of feelings going into it because for many of us, the first day of school represents something um, that is a little terrifying. It represents going into the unknown. 
Because while some of you, you may, you may even be going to the same building that you've been going to before, maybe it's not a, a new school or anything, you kind of know the drill, but it's unknown in the sense that a lot of changes could be down the pike. Classes are going to be different. They, they could be different than your previous classes as far as how much time they take. And so, you know, this is, this is a reality that we face when we go into the first week of school, the first, thing, first time doing anything, actually. We, we feel maybe all of these feelings because we're going into the unknown. Going into the unknown is something that is extremely scary and difficult to do. How many of you, uh, when I say into the unknown, you think of Frozen? I promised myself I wasn't going to sing Into the Unknown every time I say that phrase, but I've got kids that are like three and one, and Frozen is one of their favorite movies. Wow. Lord help me. And so, yes, so um, all the soundtracks of all the Frozen songs are perpetually in my head at times, and Into the Unknown is definitely one of them. So let's, let's zone back in here. I'm sorry I got us off track. Okay, so focus in, focus in, focus in. So, we're starting a brand new series called Into the Unknown. And we're going to speak that every time, every time we're going to speak it and we're not going to sing it because otherwise we will get off track every time. But Into the Unknown represents something called change. There's change everywhere. There's change in every part of our lives. And particularly in 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, you guys are going through changes that, that are, you know, honestly kind of crazy. Maybe you're experiencing new independence to make your own choices. How many of you are you're experiencing some new freedoms? Like you've got a phone recently or you're going to get a phone while you're in middle school. But these, these are some new changes. Um, you're you're going to have new people to meet. You're going to have new teams to try out for, new clubs to join. You're going to have some new classes, some new church trips that you're going to be able to go on because you've reached a different age. Uh, new apps you're allowed to get, and maybe new freedoms to stay out later with friends. You're going to experience a lot of change in the coming years. You're going to experience a lot of change, and sometimes that's really good change, like a lot of the things mentioned. How many of you are looking forward to some of the new freedoms that you're going to be able to get? How about over here? Are you guys looking forward to some of the new freedoms that you're going to get in middle school? You will be someday. How many of you, you're, you're looking forward to some of the changes that are coming down the pike in the next couple of years? It, it's fun. You, in just a few years beyond middle school, you'll get things like a driver's license, right? but things, things that are exciting in life. But if we're honest, um, here, the reality is changes uh, happen, and sometimes they're things we, we usually like to happen like that. Uh, but sometimes, uh, if we're honest, uh, changes happen that maybe we might not like at all. How, how, many of you, how many of you have experienced changes in your life that were not particularly enjoyable, uh, right? The, sometimes there's changes that, I mean, change isn't inevitable. Sometimes it's stuff that we look forward to. Sometimes it's not. Like when you have to move to a new school and you have to meet a bunch of new people, that's tough change. Sometimes that's not always the best. Or maybe you get injured in your first game and you have to sit out the rest of the season. Maybe it's the first time that, that you'll experience that. Or, or maybe it, it's when... Uh, you know, your, your friend group changes and you have to find new friends and that feels weird, it feels different and you struggle with feeling alone and left out. Maybe changes you'll experience or that classes do get harder and it's harder to keep up and, and it's harder to have a high self-esteem and self-confidence when you feel like you don't measure up the way that you used to be able to do. There's lots of changes that can happen and some of them are good and some of them are, are not so good but the reality is that changes are going to happen. That's just the nature of life. Change is a part of life. There's new seasons, uh, new cycles, and new changes that happen all the time. And so the question we want to answer in, in this series is how do we stay strong when those changes do happen? When we're experiencing all these feelings, which none of them are bad to feel, they're just reactions to the experiences that we have, how do we experience those? How do we face the changes into the unknown and still come out strong? How, how do we handle this with maturity? And so that's honestly, that's what we are going to be talking about for the series. And I'm really excited because it's very applicable to every season of life, but it's particularly applicable to your stage of life that you're in right now and the stage of life that you're going to enter in over the next couple of years. So what we're going to talk about is a time uh, where people in the Bible faced changes and they, 
They were stressed. They were anxious. A lot of them didn't know what to do with the changes. They were experiencing death of loved ones. They were experiencing uh, families breaking up or families coming together and different changes that are all involved with that. And they were, they were dealing with all kinds of changes that we, we even still face today. And they were still wrestling with, how do I come out of that ahead? How do I come out, come out of that still strong, still in my face, still rooted in what matters? And, and so the author of Hebrews is actually, uh, he, he, wrote, he wrote to the church in, in about a lot of things, but in part, how to figure some of this out. So before I show you the scripture, can somebody look up a passage for me? Who, who has their Bible with them? Can you, or your phone. Your phone is fine too. Um, if you would look up Hebrews 13.8 and just have that ready. So uh, this, is, this was a book that was written to Christians when Christianity was still brand new. So this was just decades after Jesus rose from the dead and Christians were trying to figure out how to live and particularly Jewish Christians and, and, and trying to figure out, okay, how does the Old Testament still apply to our faith today and how do we live out a faith that seems to have changed and undergone a lot of changes in recent years, right? So no longer was their faith the, the same faith as the Old Testament while it still was rooted in that. Their faith was now in the resurrection of Jesus, God himself in the flesh, the same reason we all worship. But for us, this is common. For us, this is normal, especially if you've grown up in church. Our, our country, we, we, we're pretty familiar with the gospel message most of the time. We understand that God sent his son, Jesus, to die for our sins. And if we believe in that, then we're Christians, right? And we put our faith in him and we make him our Lord and Savior. We get baptized in that, then we are Christians. And what we find is that going back to the time that Hebrews is written, it wasn't so common knowledge, and a lot of them were still trying to figure this out. Their faith seemed new. There was a lot of changes going on just in normal life, but then changes in their faith as well. And so how do we handle that in a mature way? So if you've got that passage, I'm going to go ahead and have you come up. It was Hebrews 13, 8. If you want to come on up, I'll let you read that for everybody. It's not popping up in yours. Did you have it then? Go ahead and come on up. Sorry, I saw her hand first, so I'll, I'll let you get it next time, all right? All right, read that loud for all to hear. Woo! Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Awesome. Thank you. Everybody give her a hand. All right, so whenever we're facing changes, and especially when the, the early church was trying to reconcile their new faith with some old habits and some old ways of thinking about God, this was a comforting verse. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Right? Jesus is God, right? We're all on the same page there. So he's still the same God that they worshipped in the Old Testament, except now we call him Jesus because he actually came as a human. And, and, and so basically you could substitute Jesus Christ with God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And in a world that is constantly changing, this is something that is particularly comforting. To know that no matter what's going on in our life, God will remain the same. So uh, take for instance, um, how many of you grown up or maybe even still today, you think I wanna be an astronaut someday? Did anybody ever think that? Anybody ever watch Star Wars and think I'm gonna go into space someday? Okay, okay, there we go. So I was less like I'm gonna be an astronaut and more like I'm gonna be a Jedi and fly around space, right? So, so at some point we, we all probably I won't, I won't stereotype, but at some point, many of us dream of going into space uh, or, or maybe just thinking, not even movie-wise, but thinking like, you know, we landed on the moon and, and, and that's pretty exciting. So how, how does the earth look from the perspective of space? How, how much clearer are the stars and the moon without all the city lights, without the atmosphere where you're just out in the vacuum of space? And that, that's, that's pretty exciting. But uh, something that is pretty important when you go out into space is something called a spacesuit. Um, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but in space, there's no air. So you go into space and you die. Unless you have a, something to protect you and give you oxygen, like a spacesuit. So in, in, in the spacesuit, you know, they're, they're protected from uh, the, the bitter cold when there's shade and the scorching sun when there is no shade because there's no things like atmosphere or clouds or trees to provide shade. Um, and so it can be deadly out there. And not to mention, like I said, there's no air. So they have to be able to breathe. They have to be able to survive. 
And, and so they have to have the spacesuit to give them uh, the protection. And amidst all the constant changes that are going out, and, and when, when they're out in space, they have their spacesuit that they can trust, they can depend on to, to, give them, to sustain them, their, their lives, to sustain them, and to uh, make sure that they're protected. So likewise, the spacesuit is something that they can be trusted when they're out in the unknowns of space Jesus is also the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And, and when change comes, God never changes. It, God never changes when you are in the unknown. When you are going through parts of your life where you're not sure what God is doing, when you're not sure what's headed down the pike, when you're not sure how something is going to turn out, when you're feeling anxious or nervous about how something is going to end up, you can trust that no matter what's going on, God is going to be with you, and he's going to help guide you through it. Uh, so, I want you to, in order to kind of think about this, uh, I want you to remember a time uh, when, when God was good to you in the past. So, don't, don't say it out loud, but think of a time, maybe it was a time that God answered a prayer, or when, when, if you can't think of a time that God specifically was good, think of a time where you felt His presence. Like, maybe you were on a CIY belief trip, or you were at camp, or you were, you were out camping, and you were looking under the stars and you were like, there, there has to be a God. He has to be good. And, and, and may, maybe it's just you, you notice something really great happen in your life. Just attribute that to God if you can't think of a time that God was particularly good in your life. But think about a time where you remember feeling close to God, where you feel like you felt his presence. You felt that he was good and you could truly believe that. I want you to think about a moment like that. For me, it, it is when I was at church camp. I felt that a lot. Um, it, it was also, there were times in my life where, um, I, don't, I don't know if you guys know, I'm from Joplin, Missouri, and there was a massive tornado the week I graduated high school. Did any, do you guys, are you familiar with this? Uh, this was, you guys would have been really young when this happened. This was, you know, over 10 years ago now. So, um, but what happened was there was this huge EF5 tornado, ripped through my hometown, and a third of the town was gone. So it, it was one of those things that, like, was really difficult for that reason. It was really difficult for a lot of reasons. I was also graduating high school and getting ready for college, and there was a lot of change happening in my life. And in that particular season of my life, I was in many layers of unknown territory. And I didn't know how God was going to work in that situation. But today, I can look back at that situation, and I can see the people that God put in my life to make sure my faith stayed grounded. I, I can look back at that season of my life and I can see actually how God worked and moved in the midst of that tough situation. I can even look back to things like this past year. And while it was really hard for a lot of reasons, we were isolated in a lot of ways because of COVID. There was lots of good that God was able to do and is still doing because of that. And there, there's lots of good that has happened in our church. Before, before COVID happened, our church didn't have the capabilities to live stream. Now, whether you're sick or you're out of town on vacation or, or whatever it is, you can tune it. You can watch our main services online every week and on demand. This, this was not something that we had the, the, the capability of doing before COVID, but COVID kind of forced us to come up with some new ways to get the gospel out on the missionary field of online. And, uh, and, and that, that's something that was good, that was able to happen. And so we can look back on seasons of our lives and we can see and remember how God was good to us in the past. Now, because God is the same yesterday and today and forever, we know that that same God who is good in those moments in the past is still good today. It's still good tomorrow. It's still good when we feel like he's distant. It's still with us when we feel like he's far away. It's still good when we feel like nothing else good in our life is happening. Because of this truth, this simple truth, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, we can have comfort and we can know that because God was good in the past, he will still continue to be good today and in the future, no matter what changes may come and the unknown. It means that God who loves you now will always love you. That God who cares for you will always care for you. It means that God who is with you now will be with you always. And it means that the next time you're facing unknowns in your life, God will be right there beside you, walking with you and putting the right people in your life that need to be in your life in that moment. So God never changes when you're in the unknown. This is something that's extremely powerful and extremely comforting 
and extremely helpful if you allow that truth to resonate in your heart and in your lives. So that's my encouragement for you guys this week. I'm, I'm super excited for this whole series because if there's anything that is constant in life, it is change. If there's anything that's probably more constant in your fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade years, more than anything else, it is that things are going to be changing. Changes are a coming. And if you want to come out of that strong, if you want to come out of that even more rooted in your faith than you are now, if you want to come out of that having a faith that maybe you didn't even have before, this series, we're going to talk about that. I'm super excited for, for you guys not only to hear that truth, but for it to resonate in your lives and for you to be able to have meaningful discussions about it within your small groups. If you've come to, to a point in your life where you, you want to make Jesus your Lord and Savior, that, that he is the person that you want to give your life to and you want to make your faith real and you want to get baptized and you've not done that and made that decision, I encourage you guys to talk to your small group leader about that or talk to your parents about that or talk to me about that. We've, we had several baptisms last week after second service. Today, we've got another one after second service if you want to come down and watch. Um, and, and if that's something that you want to make a decision for your life, I'd encourage you to do that. God never changes when you're in the unknown. So as you guys get ready to go to your small groups, I want you to think about this question. What's one change you're experiencing in your life right now? Think about that question. I'm going to pray for you guys, and you'll be dismissed to your small groups.